Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this full body flexibility flow. So this is really meant to help improve flexibility and mobility through your body. We're really going to emphasize stretching out through your hips, hamstrings, and also a little bit of back bending um, mixed in as well. I would say this is probably an intermediate level flow and I'm not using any props, but really whenever we are working on flexibility, Everyone is starting from a different place. So if you have blocks at home, they can be really nice to have close by, just in case you want to give yourself a little bit more support in the poses. We're actually going to start standing up at the back of our mat. So you can come on up and we're just gonna be doing some neck circles. So really simple here. You can have your feet hip width distance apart, standing up tall. And we're just gonna drop one ear to the shoulder Tracing little half moons, chin to chest, and then all the way to the other shoulder. And just keep going back and forth here. Can be really nice to work from the top down. Try to relax your jaw, even as you circle. Really pressing our shoulders down and away from the ears. And still breathing as we go through this motion. Take about one more each direction. And when you bring your chin back to your chest, you can lift your head all the way back up. And now we're gonna move into some body rolls. So very similar, but articulating all through the spine. Start by bringing your chin to your chest and really slowly start to curl and lower down at any point that you feel you need to. Start to bend your knees and folding down and then push into your heels to roll all the way up really doing this inch by inch. And we'll just do that twice more. So tuck the chin in, roll down. You can bend at the knees. And rolling back up. Last one. And with this one, the next time you're down, you're just gonna hold there. In this ragdoll fold, let's walk our hands forward, coming into downward facing dog. So in this first downward dog, go ahead and really exaggerate the bend in your right knee and push into your left heel. And at the same time as I'm pushing down into my left heel, I'm trying to lift my seat up a little bit taller and higher. And I'm also trying to press my chest towards my thighs. And let's alternate. So really bend your left knee this time, right leg is straight, push down into your heel, reach out through your arms. And coming back through to neutral, come all the way forward into plank and just lower down onto your stomach from here. So we're gonna alternate lifting the legs and lifting the upper body. So with your hands by your side, keep the back of your neck long so you're still facing down towards the mat. You're going to inhale, lift up baby cobra. So hands hover off the floor and then exhale to lower. Now keep your upper body grounded and see if you can stretch at the back of the knees and lift the legs up. Exhale down. So alternating here, inhale, baby cobra. Exhale to lower. Inhale, legs rise, point and reach through your toes. Exhale, once more each way, inhale. And lower. Legs lift up, squeeze and release. Come up onto your fingertips and you can move the hands off of the mat, kind of like a little spider cobra. You're going to push into the floor to lift your chest up. Keep pushing into the tops of your feet. 
shoulders are away from your ears. Think of reaching your chest forward. And release back down. Let's find our puppy pose from here. So you're going to push into your hands to lift up. Keep your hips directly aligned over the tops of your knees. And then walk your hands forward to bring your forehead down to the mat. I'm keeping my arms active for this variation, which means I'm keeping my elbows lifted off of the floor. And I'm trying to almost push my shoulders down to the mat. So a little bit of a back bend, but also really a shoulder opening pose. Keep stretching out and lifting. And let's walk our hands back, tabletop stance. So from your tabletop pose, make sure the fingertips are spreading wide, engage a little bit through your lower belly, and we're just gonna trace some big circles with our right knee, so getting into the hip a little bit more. So you can lift that heel up and then big circle over to the right and back down. Try to keep your left elbow straight and keep some body weight over in your right hand. So we're really just isolating that right hip, not changing the spine too much or the arms. Take one more like this. And then we'll step our right foot to the outer edge of that right hand, coming into a variation of lizard pose or dragon. We're gonna tuck the toes under and lift the back knee off the mat. And I like to just kind of rock back and forth a little bit here. So we're trying to melt the hips down, keep the chest slightly lifted, and keep hugging that right knee in towards your right shoulder. And if mobility and range allows, you can continue to do this, but down onto your forearms. So just two more breaths in whichever variation you've chosen. And if you were down on your forearms, you can come back up onto your hands. And we're gonna find three-legged dog from here. So your right leg is gonna stretch all the way up towards the sky, bend your right knee and open up your hip. Really squeeze your heel in towards your seat to get that knee up even higher. And now we're gonna step our foot about halfway to the top of the mat. So it's about, I don't know, a foot and a half behind my right hand. And then I'm gonna roll to the outer edges of both feet so that I'm now leaning on my left hand and my right arm will reach up overhead. So a variation of our side plank. As you exhale, you're gonna send those hips down. So try to even touch your left hip to the ground, reach your right arm back. So a big side body stretch. And then inhale, push the feet into the floor to lift up. Exhale, sink the hips down, really stretch deeply here. Inhale to lift, our last one, exhale. Facing forward from plank pose, lower all the way down to your belly. Clasp your hands behind your lower back. Let's find Shalambhasana, locust pose. So pick up the legs and the chest from off the mat. Really stretch at the back of the knees. Keep the back of your neck long. Try to lift your knuckles off of your tailbone. Roll the head of the arm bones back. Lift up a little more. And release wide like a child's pose. Big toes together, knees as wide as you can get them. As you press your hips back towards your heels, walk your hands out and melt into the pose. A good 10 deep breaths right here. <sighs> so while we are mainly trying to relax our hips down towards the heels, we're also trying to encourage our chest to melt to the mat. Another variation that you can do of this pose at home can be to instead bring your chest down and your chin to the mat instead. This can be a little much for the back of the neck. So personally, I like to just keep my forehead down. But if it feels good for you at home, you're welcome to do that 
a little bit more intense version of the pose. Three more deep breaths. And we'll just meet back in our tabletop pose, walking the hands in, bringing your knees back to being hip width distance apart. And setting ourselves up for those knee circles or hip circles on the left side. So you can kick that left heel up and then go over to the left before coming back down. Again, try not to twist and move your spine too much or to change what your arms are doing. Just really working on isolating the left lower side body. Take one last one here. And we'll come into our dragon pose or lizard pose. So you can step that left foot to the outer edge of your left hand. My knee is pretty much directly over the top of my ankle. I'm gonna tuck the back toes under and then invite my hips to melt down as I just rock a little bit back and forth. Imagine you can do a little back bend almost in this pose. So it's like I'm melting my heart down and rolling my shoulders back. And if you did it on the first side, you can come down onto your forearms. If this feels like too much, of course, just stay up onto your palms. Keep trying to hug that left thigh in towards your left upper arm. I know it can be a little harder when we're down on our forearms to do this. And then coming back onto the palms, if you weren't there already, three-legged dog. So you're gonna send that left leg all the way up and back, really bend your left knee. And again, you're trying to squeeze and almost touch your left heel to your left glute. Into this modified side plank, you're gonna step your left foot about halfway, kind of like the middle of your mat and then roll on the outer edges of both feet reach your left arm up and over bicep is along the ear and I'm really pushing into the ground to help lift my hips up even higher so big side body stretch and then exhale try to bring your right hip down to the floor let yourself sink into that shoulder as you reach that left arm back big side bend lift up inhale Exhale, lower down. Once more. And exhale. Facing forward, plank, just so we can lower to our bellies. We're gonna take locust, shalambasana again. This time interlace your hands the more unusual way. So get your other thumb on top. And when you're ready, lift everything up. So an important part of flexibility is also actually strengthening the muscles. So if you want deeper back bends, it's important to work on strengthening the erectors, the muscles along the spine, instead of only focusing on range of motion and flexibility. And let's release. I'll give you an option. You're welcome to do child's pose again. If you'd like to do something different, I'm gonna do a belly butterfly, which can be quite challenging, um, but it's a really great pose if you are working on hip flexibility. So exactly like the name implies, you're bringing your legs in the butterfly position, soles of the feet together, knees apart, but you're just staying down on your belly. And over time, we're trying to work our heels closer towards the mat. Personally, this is one of the hardest poses for my body and just because of my shape of my pelvis and my bones. This is also really important to keep in mind when we're working on flexibility. Sometimes it all just comes down to our anatomy.
And if you're in this belly butterfly like I am, you can also play with a little windshield wiper motion with the knees. So if I try to bring both feet over to the right, I'm able to get my left heel a little bit closer down and then kind of alternating that side to side. Three more breaths. And instead of coming back to tabletop, we're gonna find our way into downward facing dog. So however you get there, either from child's pose or your belly butterfly, have your feet hip width distance apart, hands shoulder width distance apart as you lift your seat up nice and high. See if you can get your heels a little bit closer towards the mat, stretch out a little longer. Let's extend our right leg up towards the sky. Keep it straight and squared this time. And we're gonna come into our low lunge on Janiyasana. So right foot forward between the hands, back knee comes down to the mat and go ahead and rise on up. You're going to lengthen your tailbone down. As you reach your arms, grab a hold of your left wrist with your right hand and see if you can crescent over finding a side bend from here. Still melting and pressing your hips forward and down. Inhale all the way back through to center. From here, you're going to bring that right knee and that right leg back. So I'm crossing my right thigh over the left one. I'm widening my feet away from one another. And then I'm pressing my hips back. If the range of motion is limited, you're just gonna work on this pose from here working on pressing it back. Otherwise, if you're able to, you're gonna come into cow face pose, Gomukhasana, sitting the hips down, either staying elevated in the pose or folding forward. So really getting into our hips here. Push your hands into the floor. Go ahead and lift yourself up. All you're going to change is you're going to straighten that left leg. So this is a variation of cow face pose. I think it's a pretty intense one. We're really working on the hamstrings down the left leg and fold on forward from here. And you'll probably notice I'm not folding very far. This is a pretty tough pose for me. So it really doesn't matter how far you end up going into a pose, the benefits are the same. So don't feel like you always have to push yourself to do more, to go further. And lifting all the way up, uncross the legs. We're just gonna do reverse tabletop pose to stretch at the front of the shoulders. So feet hip width distance apart, hands shoulder width distance apart, push down, squeeze through your seat and lift up as high as you can go. And exhale, release, cross at the ankles, downward facing dog. And we'll go and repeat the sequence over on the other side. You're welcome to hang out in downward dog or you can take a vinyasa, inhaling plank, chaturanga, so hovering halfway. Ordva Mukha Svanasana, this is your upward facing dog. And we meet downward facing dog. Left leg rises, keep it straight this time. Anjani Asana, your low lunge. Left foot steps forward, back knee comes down to the mat. Reach your arms up. So really staying strong and engaged through the lower belly. Grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Inhale, lift up taller. And then exhale, crescent over towards the left. And hopefully this helps you get the stretch a little bit deeper through your right hip flexors. All the way back up through to center, frame the front foot with both hands. We're coming to Gomukhasana, our cow face pose. So I'm gonna wrap my left thigh over my right one. I'm gonna widen my feet away just to make room for my hips. And maybe I'm just working on pressing and holding from here, or I'm dropping my hips down to the mat and folding forward. It's very normal if one side feels just like a little stickier than the other. So 
So those changes are completely fine, completely normal. What we want to stay constant and the same is the rhythm and the flow of our breath. So even when things feel really intense, we want to avoid that natural tendency to hold the breath. It won't make the pose any easier. And lifting all the way up, let's straighten that bottom leg. So right leg goes forward. You might need to shift around a little bit here and we fold on down. And again, I'm doing more of a yin style fold here. So I'm letting my spine round. I'm letting my head drop. I'm not pushing or pulling. It's mainly gravity doing most of the work for me here. And lifting all the way back up, uncross the legs, reverse table one last time. Push into the hands, push into the feet, squeeze and lift your seat up. Really try to stretch into your shoulders primarily. And we'll release downward facing dog. This is our last opportunity to take a vinyasa. Of course, you're welcome to skip it and just hang out in your downward dog. Otherwise, take that flow. And from this downward dog, let's bring our knees to the mat and go ahead and lower all the way down onto your back. We'll come into a variation of bridge pose. It's kind of like supported bridge, but instead of using a block, we're gonna use our hands. So start to lift your seat off the ground, and then you're going to shrug your shoulders and your elbows underneath you so that your palms are supporting your pelvis. Just to get a little bit more height, Slow, steady breaths here. Try not to let your knees splay open. Keep a gentle squeeze through the inner thighs. One more big breath. And exhale, slowly lower down inch by inch. So I'll give you guys an option. We're either going to come into wheel pose, Dhanurasana. If this feels like maybe it's too much, you can just do that same bridge pose once more, or you can even do camel pose coming to kneeling if that feels a little bit better for you. I'm just gonna shift down so I have room here. So if you're coming into wheel, you're gonna frame your head with your hands, palms, Fingertips are spreading really nice and wide. Feet are super active, pushing into the mat. And then you can lift yourself up and really working on this extension through the arms, through your chest, staying super active and strong through your legs. Just three more breaths. If you need to come out sooner, of course, do so. Very slowly, ease on out. And pull your knees in towards your chest. Maybe rock a little bit side to side. And we'll come into shoulder stand and plow pose from here. Should feel really nice after those back bends. So I'm just kind of shrugging my shoulder blades underneath me a little bit. And then we're gonna lift the hips up. And just like what we were doing kind of in that bridge pose, you can support your hips with your hands. And lifting your legs up. And maybe this is where you'd like to stay. If you'd like to transition to plow, you can drop one and both legs behind, either keeping your hands to rest on your lower back or grounding them to the mat. If you had your hands and arms flat, support your hips again. Very slowly come out of this one. 
Try not to slingshot your head and your shoulders up as you lower the hips. So be really mindful and controlled when the hips drop down. And you can just pull your knees in towards your shoulders or maybe come into Ananda Balasana, your happy baby pose. <sighs> Massaging the lower back a little by rocking side to side. Before we go into Shavasana, let's take a reclined twist. I'm going to open my arms into a little cactus shape here. And then hips are going to go right. I'm going to wrap my right thigh over my left one, kind of like my eagle legs, before dropping both knees over to the left. So if there's anything that feels funny through your lower back after this sequence and these deep back bends, twists are a great way to help reestablish and come back to a more neutral position and neutral alignment. And you can tone your belly to float the knees up, uncross the legs, and we'll shift to the other side so your hips can go more towards the left side of your mat. Wrap your left thigh over your right and drop both knees over to the right. Try to press that left shoulder blade down into the mat. It might be lifted up, but try not to have it lifted more than an inch. So we don't want to be rolling over to the right side. Let's come back through to center. We're just going to make our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose. Really important to do, especially after a more intense practice like this, even if there wasn't a whole lot of strength necessarily needed. They were definitely bigger poses with deeper stretches. So this is just your opportunity to really process and integrate all of that work you've done. So you can close your eyes, take up space. Enjoying this time of silence and stillness. We'll stay here for a few more minutes and I'll let you know when it's time to ease out.
Well, you can breathe a little deeper. Move through your fingers and your toes. Waking back up. Maybe stretching your arms up overhead if that feels good. We'll just roll to one side. Push your arms into the floor to help yourself come up and take a seat in any way that feels good for your hips and your lower back. Eyes can stay closed as you join your hands together at the front of the heart. Take a moment to really notice how you feel now. And let's close by chanting Om one time. Inhale to chant, breathe in. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this flexibility flow with me. I hope you feel really good in your body after this sequence. Please leave me a comment below. Do subscribe if you don't already. It's a great way to support free yoga on the internet. And hopefully we'll practice again together very soon.